Hi there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Today we're going to take a look at the new Sennelier Le Petit Aquarelle. Aquarelle, yeah, <laughs> that's it. Watercolors, and they are the new student line from Sennelier. And I also have um, a set of 18 artist Sennelier paints so we can compare them. Um, so the first thing I did when I got these paints is I swatched them out. And I swatched them out and then let them dry and then I did another glaze of each color on top, let that dry, and then I did another glaze. That's the same thing I did with the artists in LEA paints too, just to get apples to apples comparison. Um, I am using different paper. I should have done this on the same paper, but I wasn't thinking about that when I uh, when I swatched this out. But um, I found the colors to be very comparable, um, and in painting with them, I found them to be very comparable as well. So I'm gonna show you two paintings I did with these. Um, I just did this one today during my live stream. That video is up on my YouTube channel and the other day I did this and both of them were done with limited palettes so I think that's kind of like a, a good test of the quality of a paint is if you can paint with a limited palette and get nice clean fresh mixes so for my sheet painting because my little color study here um, I just went with three colors I went with my yellow ochre, which is an opaque color. I went with burnt umber, which I have to say the browns are a little weak, um, but I, I find the browns to be a little weak in both of their lines. Um, thalo blue and permanent rose. So I had two um, transparent colors, one semi-opaque color and one that's probably semi-transparent. What did they call it? They called that one, um, no, they called that burnt umber transparent. So, um, so three transparents and one opaque color and I found I got great mixes with that and I was very pleased with how they mixed and to tell you the truth um, having used both of these sets I really couldn't tell a big difference between the, the petite uh, aquarelle and the regular so first thing I like about this box is that it has a nice comfortable holding strap I typically do not um, hold my paints from the ring that come on these uh, kits. I don't find it that comfortable. I mean, it's not bad, but I tend to just set it on the ground next to me. But I do find that this is extremely comfortable. I don't feel like it's going to slip. And the texture of this is a non-slip, um, kind of like matte plastic. So um, I like that. A lot of people don't like plastic boxes. That's personal preference. Uh, it doesn't bother me at all. So there we have it open. Another feature that... Um, that I like is that you can take, and I just took it out to clean it, you can take this um, palette out. Like if, you, if you're if you working at home and you wanted more space, I don't see any reason why you couldn't mix here and in this area if you wanted it. And you can also turn it around so that you have the smaller wells closer to the palette or the larger wells closer to the palette. It's completely up to you. Um, so that's really nice. And it seems like you could take, you probably pop this part out too if you wanted to. So um, one difference, between, besides the fact that this is plastic and this is metal, between these two kits is that the, um, the metal kit has, their, the paints are in their own individual pans. These, the paints are, the tablets of paint are just in the molded plastic uh, container. Not a big deal to me, but something that I want you to know in case you're buying this because you think you're going to reuse the individual pans or something else, that you can't do it. It's just a molded well. Um, you could refill these with... The pans, you could just pop out the pans and put them in there if you wanted to buy the artist pans, or you could um, refill it from tubes, which is probably what I'll end up doing when they run out. Uh, so I've only done a couple paintings. I have used um, both like the yellow ochre and the rose, both of those paintings, and I have I have kind of a dent. So, I mean, that's something I also noticed about the other Sennelier's is that they kind of wear down a little quicker than other brands of watercolor that I've used. But the other, the thing I like about them is that I can keep layering and keep layering and keep layering and I feel like I still get that luminosity. Um, and also on the professional Sennelier paints, they, get, they give you a little plastic overlay with the colors printed on them. Um, and with this you don't, you'll just have to kind of look at the, this is what the box looks like. Anyway, you'll have to look at the box to see um, what your colors are. I suppose you could take a Sharpie and write it on the palette if you wanted to. I don't, I mean, I'm, you could put the palette, the color numbers on there, uh, but I don't think that's really important. I'll probably just cut this out and put it in my um, binder with all my paint swatches just so I have that information. So what I thought I would do is to kind of compare. I showed you these swatches that I've already painted out, but I know some of the colors are the same color number, so they don't have a separate chart for the Petite Aquarelle paints. Um, on the Sennelier website or anywhere else I could find online. I emailed them about it to see if they could tell me what the pigment information was or what the difference was between the um, 
professional and the student line but they did not get back to me so I'm just gonna have to investigate this myself and I can look through here and just compare numbers so we've got the lemon yellow in both series so let's just compare them side by side because um, because I like to find out what's in the stuff that I buy uh, so I'm just gonna hopefully get these both well I guess they're not gonna both be in, in the shop but that's all right. You can trust me that I'm, that I'm, well, maybe I, oh, you know what? If I put my paper that way, I can get them both in the shot. There we go. Okay. So, um, I'm just going to use a synthetic brush and I am going to do the lemon yellow. This is the lemon yellow La Petite Aquarelle by Sennelier. So, I, I feel so fancy when I say them. I'm saying these French words. I don't know what that accent was. And here's a lemon yellow in the artist's. That might be a little more pigmented. Um, let's let's actually let's make some sharpie lines here. Oh, I'm so fancy. That way we can see how opaque they are. Sometimes student paints have more fillers in them, and it makes them more opaque. When you generally want a transparent color. So let's go back in. I've got the artist on my brush, so I'm going to go over that. That's quite transparent. That's good. And it says it's transparent on the container, so that's good too. So let's go over that. Gosh, they look very similar to me. I'm just trying to tell if I can see maybe more of a green undertone on the artists. Gosh, it's, it's very similar. I feel pigment strength is really similar too. So let's see, what other color do I have that's... I have Carmine, which is PV19, and I have... Um, the permanent rose which uh, they're not the same color numbers but i think that they're i think they're gosh i think they're probably close enough um so these aren't the same colors but i think they're very similar so i've got this is the um student that's actually what we used in our painting we'll draw these two and we'll see what the color shift is um and then i have the carmine which is right here And that does look darker. Those are two different colors, though. The same pigment number, but they are two different colors. So um, so keep that in mind. Um, let's see if we have another color that's the same. Uh, 805, which is phthalo green light. I have that in both uh, lines. So they're very transparent. It does feel like it might be a little... I don't know if weak's the right word, but it doesn't really want to leap off the pan onto my brush. We'll try this one here, which is 805. Very similar. I would say this does seem a little bit more pigmented, but the artist one, but the, the shade seems to be the same. Um, forest green, which is right here. And this is a color, a green that's got black in it. That's a student. That's the Le Petit Aquarelle. Fancy Smanchy. Fancy Smanchy. No, Fancy Smanchy. I can't say it right. Oh my gosh. Um, and then we have the forest green over here. The artists. Uh, very, very similar. In fact, I don't know if I got as much of that on my brush. Gosh, almost identical. I'm seeing more of the texture of the paper for some reason on that. Maybe the student one's a little bit more opaque. Because I feel like I can see more texture on that than of that. Um, so that's that's interesting. Maybe that's probably a little bit more opaque. Very hardly um, hardly comparable. I mean, hardly dis dis distinguishable. Distinguishable, I guess. So 205. I have raw umber in both lines. So that one is right next to yellow ochre. That's this guy right here. So let's try this. Raw umber. Okay, that's a student. And we're gonna try raw umber. I gotta find it here because it doesn't look like it. I gotta look at my little overlay. See, the overlay is handy for this. Whoa, let's see, raw umber is this one right here. So in the pan, this one looks way darker. And yeah, it looks quite a bit different. So number 205 looks looks very different between the um the artist looks almost like a Van Dyke Brown and the um, the student looks like a raw sienna. I'm just making sure I didn't grab the wrong color. 
yellow ochre, raw umber, burnt sienna. So yeah, I didn't, um, I, those, those, that, those two colors are very different between the student and artist grade. Okay, I do have, um, I have Venetian red in both colors. So let's go with the student one first. Beautiful color. It's a real, this is a nice strong, um, a nice strong earth tone. And then let's see, that one is over here on this. Very similar. I feel like it's less red. Like the artist one's less red. Let me see. Maybe I didn't get as much pigment on there. Gosh, they're pretty darn close. It almost seems like the artist one might be a little bit more opaque, but that's, that's a fairly semi-opaque color anyway, so I wouldn't... Uh, I wouldn't really worry about that. So let's see. I'm seeing if there's any other colors that are the same. Oh, ultramarine blue. We've got ultramarine blue in both. I don't know if I've used the ultramarine in the. Oh, yes, I have. Um, but that's. I love that color. So I'm gonna make another little fancy. Do a few more. Maybe I'll find a few more that are the same that I can use. But my gosh, it's really. I mean, those aren't the same color. I know. I. I, I reckon actually. I shouldn't say for sure, but I reckon they're the same pigment number. Um, Permanent Rose is a softer color, so I wouldn't let that dissuade you from trying this brand of paint. What, where's the brush I was using? There we go. Um, okay, Ultramarine. That should be this guy right here. We'll do him right there. Eh, this Ultramarine does feel a bit weak. Not too bad. And the Ultramarine in here should be right here. This feels like it's more robust. Well, geez, maybe not. <laughs> Yeah, it does seem a little bit more robust. But then again, I did go back in. I did go back in and get more. Let me go back in and get more of the uh, student one and, and uh, make sure we're getting a fair. I, I think the ultramarine blue on the artist is a little bit more robust. So I'm just going to check numbers here. This on the, it's 315 and 315, same number. So um, it's it's a small difference. I don't know if you can pick it up on camera. I'm seeing a slight more uh, vibrancy, like it's a more saturated color in the um, artist grade. Um, let's see, any other colors that are the same? We could compare some colors that are similar. Let's see, primary blue. Let's see. Oh, we got with phthalo blue, 326. Do I have three? Oh, yes, I have 326 in both of these. Okay, so they call them different things, though. They call them uh, primary blue in the student one. Let's grab that. Whoops, I had the artist one. Primary blue. I think that's what we just used. No, that's this one down here. Primary blue. This is the student one. Isn't that gorgeous? So It's like a phthalo blue. Um, different from what from the Thalo turqu turquoise, but gosh, not much. This is Thalo turquoise. I swatched it out earlier. It's just a slightly greener color, and um, that would be right next to ultramarine right here for the artists. Gosh, pretty much identical. I mean, this might be a little bit more transparent. I'm seeing the black line just fine and dandy through both of them. Yeah, that's pretty uh, pretty hard to. Uh, to compare really now there was an issue with the student color they call that cobalt blue to me that does not look like cobalt blue um and i don't have cobalt blue but i do have a, this one called cinerous blue which i think is is probably pretty darn close so let's compare this cobalt blue in the student line because look how this is a very weak color um i'm not i don't like this color very much maybe if i sprayed it and let it sit for a bit but it's very um, gelatinous feeling. It feels like it has a lot of filler. What I think it is, is a mixture between white, um, ultramarine blue and thalo blue and more white than anything. Although it's not very opaque. Um, you know, I'm putting quite a bit on there. It's not terribly opaque. It is called opaque. It's called cobalt blue hue and they do have it listed as opaque. But then this, uh, cinerous blue here, Oh, that's way more green, but it's also that's also that a mix of those colors. But I just think that might be mixed more with the ultramarine blue, or maybe it's ultramarine blue and white. I don't know, but I don't. I'm, I think they could have left that out of the kit since there is already a warm blue in there. The thing is, with the set of twelve, you get that cobalt color instead of ultramarine, I believe, or instead of phthalo, one or the other. But it's a less useful set. So I just want. I would not recommend the set of twelve, but I do like the set of twenty like twenty four. And I have to say that um, that I'm very impressed with with how it all, uh, 
how it all comes out. Now I'm seeing as they dry, there's more of a shift with the um, student paint. The uh, there This got a lot lighter than its artist counterpart. Here, I found the student paint to be darker and deeper in color. Those are identical, but then again, I think your PR101 is a fairly inexpensive pigment, so they probably wouldn't have to um, cheap out on it at all. Ultramarine is very close, especially as it dries, but it's shifting a little bit lighter over there. Their raw raw umbers are a little different. The raw umber in the student set's a little yellower. Maybe it's with some yellow ochre mixed in, I don't know. Um, those weren't the same color, but I know they're probably the same pigment number, so I put them there to compare. And I really found the yellows to hold up um, very comparably. And those blues look, look great too. So, I mean, you gotta kind of ask yourself, is it worth spending the extra money for the artist's quality? Um, and you know, you're you're the one that's gonna have to decide for that. If I look at the, um, I'm looking at the little stars on this, which should be a light fast indication. These all have three stars. So that would indicate that they're, I guess three was the best light fastness rating because some of these um, earth tones I know are very light fast. I know some of these pigments are very light fast. And here, I'm not sure if the ASTM number is what they're using to um, to give light fastness ratings or not, but they have their numbers are between one and three, and some are not rated. So I don't know. I guess you'd have to can you'd have to find out what pigments were in there. Then you could you could pretty much decide whether they were light fast or not. I am very impressed with this um, for the mere fact that I was able to paint a couple paintings using just a few just a couple colors each. This one using four colors. And mixing everything from those four. This one I might have used five. No, I used, I used four or five in this one. I'm thinking five. And my colors stayed nice and fresh. I don't feel like they're chalky at all. Um, I feel like they're very pigmented. And compared to other uh, student lines, I think they're fantastic. And in fact, I think they hold their, their own against the artist line. And I think you could really decide whether you like Sennelier paints by using this line, they behave very similar. They seem to have the same level of transparency and the same ability to layer over without getting mud. Because the thing that I like about this is that I can take it out um, plein air painting, painting out at the beach or somewhere, and I can keep throwing paint on and I never feel like I'm losing the luminosity. I feel like it. you can keep layering and keep building that luminosity. Uh, that says the colors are not knock your socks off bright. That's not what you get with Sennelier. It's a, they're definitely best for painting outdoors. I think personally, compared to the other watercolors I have, I just love that I never feel like I overwork a painting with this. But I honestly think you could spend $27, get this set, paint with them, see if you like this type of paint. And then if so, then invest or just refill. Like I love that olive green. Um, I usually don't like olive green. I like a sap green, but that olive is so luminous and that's a student grade, that's their student grade paint. Um, maybe they've added brighteners to these paints or some sort of enhancements that make them less transparent, but um, but more vivid. I don't know. I just, um, to me, it feels like the same paint as what's in the artist's line for the most part. I mean, putting some side by side, I can put, I see minute differences, but, um, but as soon as I start, as soon as I was using that, I was like, wow, these seem the same. And now that I've got done some side by side comparisons, I think they are very comparable. And this set here, I bought on sale at Jerry's for $60.50 or so. It was their special introductory buy. It was 12 for the price. It was 12 plus six for the price of 12, basically. So 18 for the price of 12. That deal's still going on. Um, and I, I like to try new brands of paint or new brands to me when they're on a really great special. So that's why I grabbed this. Um, and I'm, I really enjoy them. Um, I find these to be very good too. And I think it's smart to put out a good student line if you already have an established artist line because what's gonna happen when a student runs out of that green? They're gonna go buy a tube of the of the expensive stuff and put it in there and keep on painting. And they're not cheaping out on their on their student line. So what I hate is when an artist when a company comes out with really crappy paint and somebody paints with it and they're like, Well, I can't paint, look at this you know, they don't know that the paint's not good if they don't have anything to compare it to. Um so I'm glad that they put out a good paint. And it, and it really will serve them because if you start off with a paint brand that you like in a student line, you're going to go to the artist line, I think, when you're done. So enough of me gabbing. Let's take a look at the at other student lines of paint and then we can you can kind of compare that way because there's actually a few really good student lines out there that I recommend. Um, I've got my book here. This is my big old swatch book and I throw swatches after I've done a painting in here and I, I swatch out my, my paints as I get them. Uh, so this is a Grumbacher Academy. 
I really like this brand of paint too. It's pretty easy to find. The Sennelier is going to be a little more difficult to find just because it's the student line is new. Um, but I found, I find the colors. Look at that. The Carmine Hue PV19. See, that's why I think that's PV19. Um, and if I compare it to the artist chart online, they, they use the same number. That's the pigment number I got there. I don't agree with this uh, bright red. Look at that. Um, this right here, they have that listed as alizarin crimson. It's not. It looks like a naphthol crimson. Looks kind of like that Scarlet Lake there, um, but not a PR83 color. So I think there are some issues like the cobalt. That's not, that's not cobalt. Uh, that cobalt hue even though they put that number on there and i'm not sure about the um the orange that they were using but i do find that uh, these colors are as good as a grumbacher academy student line maybe a little bit better like their turquoise and their thalo turquoise very similar um i really i like their olive green better than the sap green in the grumbacher line permanent green light versus thalo green i like the thalo green because it's less uh, opaque but, um, but very comparable. There's the Indian red and Venetian red. Very similar. Um, so co they compare well against that. Let's see what else we have for student paints. I have the um, Cotman. This is, I'm going to show you the new Cotman swatch because I have some Cotman that has like the, they used to put cadmiums and cobalts in Cotman but they don't anymore. Um, so let's do this because this is more accurate. We have... Um, Let's see, that's just their sap green versus the uh, Sennelier. Let's look at something with the, with the PV19. So that would be like that family of colors there. Uh, this does seem a little bit more intense. I'm just personally painting with it. These felt like a higher quality paint than the Cotman. The Cotman do feel a little bit more um, gelatinous, I would say. They're not chalky, but they do have that creaminess to it that, that feels like there's probably some filler in there. But, um, but yeah, I mean, the, the colors, the colors are very comparable to other student lines. I would definitely recommend these. Let's see, what's another one that I like? Um, oh, Van Gogh. Let's find my Van Gogh swatch because that's going to be also very similar. Uh, I thought that's a uh, Turner, that's Holbein. I'll, I'll keep this, you know what? Let me slide that over so you can kind of, you can kind of have that in sight. Even though these are artists, this is Mission Gold. I'll just bring them over. You can kind of see it as we go. Um, that's Daniel Smith Artist, which is very, very vibrant. Uh, oh, this is um, Lucas. And I have the... Actually, no, I'm sorry. These are the Yarkas the, the, and the Sodden, Sonnet. So it's the uh, professional and the student grade in those lines, which are also very, very similar. Um, that's Core by Gold in there. Core. And let's see. Oh, those are some watercolor pencils. Those are random Da Vinci colors. These also hold their own with the Da Vinci's. I mean, light fastness, I can't tell you because I don't know what exactly pigments are in those, um, those paints. But I think it's a great, definitely a great start. These are the Lucas, and I have the, and all, Lucas is another company that does a fantastic student line. Um, so I have their professionals and their students next to each other. And you can see, I the, the Lucas ones are a little bit more opaque. That's something just, uh, I think with their, they have a heavier mineral content or less finely ground paint. Those are the Yarka uh, White Knights. White Knights and Yarka are both trade names for um, the same company. And I, what am I looking for? I'm looking for, Oh, Van Gogh. That's what I'm looking for. That's Schminka. Schminkas are nice. I don't have that many colors. I have 12 colors in Schminka, and uh, some are kind of unusual and not ones I would have chosen. But uh, but there those are. And gosh, I'm looking for... Those are Kusakabi's watercolors. Those are hard to find here. Aquafine. Aquafine is not... I'm not that crazy about Aquafine. Um, they are easy to find, which is nice, but um, I find their texture to be very streaky and thick and kind of gelatinous, uh, more so than other student paints. They at least give you the pigment numbers, which are nice, but I, if you have the choice, they, they wouldn't be my first choice. Ah, here we go, Van Gogh. This is what I wanted to show you. They're very similar to the Van Gogh. Um, 
their uh, that's their sap green. I do prefer the olive green in Schminka. There's their PV19 color, very similar, which is a quinacridone rose. Their permanent red, this is called primary red, and the, and the color number matches the lizard crimson, which it doesn't really look like a lizard crimson. Um, and we've got Prussian blue, which we don't have a Prussian in this set. We've got phthalo, ultramarine, very, very standard. Um, very comparable. So I would say if you're looking for a student grade, I would not hesitate to try the Sennelier. I wouldn't hesitate to try the Sennelier if you're just wondering to know about Sennelier paint and not spend an arm and a leg. Um, I wouldn't um, steer you away from the student set. I think it's very high quality. Um, I also like the Grumbacher a lot and I like Cotman. Um, so probably in order, I would say Van Gogh and Sennelier kind of tied. And then I would say Grumbacher Academy, and then I would say Cotman as far as reputable student quality paints. I also like Sonnets. They're very bright, but light fastness. I don't have reliable. Um, actually, I did find their pigment information. Not all their colors are light fast. They do have light fastness information, so they're good too. But um, but don't hesitate. If you're curious about these, I am, I'm very pleased with them. I'm glad I bought them. Um, and I'll probably just refill them with tubes when I, when I run out of paint. I think they're a great deal, and I uh, hope you found this review helpful. If you do have any questions, let me know in the comments below. I'll try to remember to link up those other two tutorials so you can see them in action. But hey, they mix bright and clean. Um, you're not gonna you're you're not gonna learn on these paints and be. Sometimes when you when you've got some crappy paints, you just can't learn to mix colors because you just get mud and gray, and and you're not gonna have that situation with here with these paints. I think that they really put the artist first when they design their products. And um, even though they don't respond to emails or maybe it got lost in cyberspace, I don't know, uh, I would trust their paint. I wanna thank you so much for watching. If you did enjoy this tutorial, I would appreciate a thumbs up and share it with any of your artsy friends that might enjoy it too. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time, happy crafting.